Welcome to episode 8, Corinda Bloodstock's Off and Racing. We're here at the English Classic Sale. We've been doing the rounds today. And um, we've been kindly joined by Adrian Bott. Adrian, thanks for coming, mate. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, no, it's great to have you on. Um, obviously, we've just started a new relationship together. Um, you're going to train a couple of yearlings for us, and we're pretty excited about it, aren't we? Very excited, yeah. We've got a microphone and a Russian Revolution, both Colts. Um, microphone's already at the breakers, and we'll head down to Adrian. Again, Adrian's a pre-trainer and the Russian Revolution Colt on the 26th, he'll go in. Yeah, exciting. Um, yeah, I think uh, the system worked really well for us for the first time. Obviously, our first um, sales sort of working together and um, you know, landing on the same type. So I think that's, I think that's sort of crucial trying to you know, achieve the results that we, you know, where we, where we want to be, what we want to get. And yeah, I think we've focused on those early maturing types, those horses that can be uh, educated early and, and, and through the training system early and we want to get them to the races early, you know, quicker return for your owners. It's where big prize money is. It'd be great to get back to the magic millions. Um, you know, slipper colts, in terms of sort of colts and, and values, that's, you know, that's the uh, lottery numbers for, the for dream, owners, yeah. isn't it? You know, yeah, so, um, dream. you know, we want to put ourselves in, in that picture and that winning position and, and going to those early sales and trying to pick those sort of types, you know, from, from our perspective is, you know, uh, giving you a greater chance in, in putting yourself in that picture. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to get our hands on them in, in, in training. It's um, it's good fun, that early part of the education. Yeah. Yeah, and no, we're keen and as well, obviously you've got a great system with all of the fantastic results you guys have and we're keen to be a part of that and see what makes the Waterhouse Bot partnership, what makes it so special and how you churn out those results. and. I've been pretty lucky, you know, I've been learning and mentored by the best in the game, you know, in, in Gay Waterhouse and, you know, she learned from the best trainer that Australia's ever seen, her father, TJ Smith, and, you know, each each one of those um, trainers have been renowned for, for the two-year-olds, um, you know, the number of Golden Slipper wins between Gay and her father's, you know, incredible, um, you know, the Tullock Lodge of the stable itself is um, produced a, a phenomenal amount, so yeah, yeah they've the, got the statue yeah, that yeah, Rose yeah, Hill, and it's, it's just it's, it's incredible. incredible. What's important though is like even though like because we're about those precocious two-year-olds as well, and yourself and Gay obviously just get results left, right, and centre with the two-year-olds, but it's really important to point out that it's not just about the two-year-olds. Like your results are all over the park, aren't they? Yeah, well, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed as just a, a, a two-year-old trainer. I think um, you know that the two-year-old education and that part of their, uh, I guess, early careers, I, I think, lays the foundations for the success in the three- and four-year-old, you know, further careers as well. So it's not just in isolation, their two-year-old careers. But, yeah, to your point, um, yeah, as, a, as a trainer, we want to be represented in... There's a lot of races out there. There's a lot of prize money out there. The two-year-old, certainly one small aspect of it. There's guineas and oaks and derbies pop races and everywhere. And pop-ups everywhere, like you said. So, you know, we want to have a very well-rounded um, and well-diverse stable. So, yeah, we do buy, we do buy staying sort of types of horses. Um, we've got horses from overseas. We've got, yeah, colts, fillies. We've got those middle distance types. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to try and sort of, yeah, tweak our skills in every single little sort of section of that and be represented in in each of those sort of races and depart, you know, go to, we go to a carnival day on on spring or autumn, Sydney, Melbourne, you know, you, you, you hate sitting on the sidelines and seeing, you know, some good racing go by, <laughs> and yeah. you're watching from the sidelines. So you you you, you want to be rep well represented across all levels. Yeah, no, definitely, and I, I just love like horses like Hawaii Five O or Alligator Blood, like these horses that you've got, and you have improved them, like your system. Uh, not being disrespectful to their old systems, but it's a fact they have just found another leg. Yeah, they've been phenomenal horses. You know, we're so you know privileged to be in that sort of position, particularly with a horse like Alligator Bloodies. That changed so many things for us. Like, um, you know, yeah, that's the best horse in my short career that been able to to come across. You know, for, for us, I think it was seven Group Ones he was able to win. So, um, in a short period, so for one horse to to do that, they're they're so incredibly hard to. To come across, and, and you know, those, such those a recognised horse with oh, the Australian you know, public. I, I didn't like, obviously <laughs> respected the horse and his talent so much, but I just didn't realise the following until he yeah, came into following. the. Oh yeah, he came into the yard, <laughs> and then you know, like, um, yeah, after he won his first race, and you know, it's just phenomenal the people that did recognise and associate 
us with him, all of a sudden, you know, just the, the general public, or you know, all of a sudden, you'd be, you know, you know, how's alligator blood? And all anyone ever wanted to know about was alligator blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was so touching. It was great. You know, I hope we can, um, uh, you know, I hope we can find another one like him together. You know, and and, and they're out there. They, yeah. you know, those champions are there to come <laughs> through, and you know, they can come from any sale at any price, any breed. Um, yeah, that's the beauty of the game, isn't it? So it keeps I, us all going. I don't think if um, we found an alligator blood, our partners would see too much of us. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> One thing, I guess, for our listeners, what defines, like, you've got the good horses, the Saturday horses, and then obviously your state group three level horses. What's the difference with an alligator blood, in your opinion, for our listeners? Like, what makes him so good? Yeah, it's probably a few of those aspects that you, you know, can't physically see at a sale, I guess, you know, that you're trying to read into a bit. Like, obviously, they've got to have all the physical attributes, I think, to do it. Um, you know, they've got to have that, that sort of makeup that we sort of like to see in the horses. But, yeah, their, their, their constitution, um, you know, their mental capacity um, for the work, um, you know, to, to cope with the level of work that you can give them, to have that great appetite, go home, eat up, you know, that willingness to, you know, and, and desire to keep winning, you know, alligator blood was just... Mentally, I think one of the toughest horses oh, that we yeah, had. You yeah. know? The will and to win. The will to win, yeah. you know, and you know that's probably sometimes a bit hard to predict and, and, and see what's... That's what keeps us all yeah, in a what's, job. What's on the inside <laughs> To there, find you know? that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. What, how big that heart is or, you know, yeah. then that's without even sort of talking about some cardiovascular, um, you know, how big's their set of lungs or, um, you know, like you said, how, how big's their heart and the producing and, um, you know, all those sort of types of things that you sort of can't, you know, technically measure but um you know they're they're probably what do separate the the ultimately the the, the champions and, and you hope that you know the stains are passing the best of those sort of traits on in in, in their genes but uh, if I, I feel if we can p produce a nice or pick a nice um physically strong and sound mature horse that's going to stand up to to the racing um a horse that's got a, a very good uh mental attitude and capacity towards work and I think you can get a good gauge on um, that throughout the sale how they handle that their attitude towards it um, you know that you want we want to have good doers that can handle the work but every time we you know throw them something they sort of step up and keep stepping up and, and, and building and um, you know a horse that can that I feel that as I said can stand up to it that we can then get physically fitter and stronger than the competition and then hopefully they, they can sort of take care of the rest yep and would you say, so you guys trained Farnham, for example, you're going around inspecting his yearlings and everything this year. Would you say some of those traits are in the yearlings? Oh, definitely. You know, he was a, he was a real professional in himself the early days. And you know, I, I thought I saw a lot of that consistently sort of across the horses. Um, and, and, and that's a, you know, obviously a trait high up for, for us. And, and, you know, that's why a number of them sort of made the short list. Um, first and foremost, they looked athletic types, but just the way that they operated um, and the way that they approached, you know, their... temperament wise Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think as much as you can read into that throughout the sale, throughout their careers, you know, um, any sort of insight you can sort of get to them at home and seeing them in and around. Because and they've got to work with you, don't they? They, want to, they? they have to work with you. That's the big thing. More and more you see the examples of horses that may have all the talent in the world, could be the fastest horse over a certain, you know, distance in his track work, whatever you could say, I've got no horse faster than that, but you know, he wants to try and run the whole race at that speed, or he just, yeah, you know, yeah. he just cannot handle it, or he'll only give you that in the mornings and not in other times, you know, like you see Four so many different, far, like. yeah, you see so many different examples time and time again, where the, where the horse that's not um, working with you, the horse that's not applying himself, the horse that doesn't have that will to win, the horse that doesn't have the relaxed temperament or the right attitude for the work. Um, Constitution, to with, yeah, there's so many aspects. I, I, I can't stress the importance of that in their work and being able to get them from, um, you know, the average level to, you know, the above average and the elite level. I think that's what separates them. I remember, like, back in, this is going back a long time, in 2000 and Five, we dead heated with a Bart Cummings horse in Newcastle Cup called High C. We had Kirill Boy and we had lunch with Bart and he said, the more they eat, the harder I work them. Yep. 
and that's as simple as that. He goes, just keep it simple. The more they eat, the harder I work them. <laughs> and they, you can get a horse then that's physically fitter and stronger to, to take them on. So yep. yes, the physical makeup of the horse and the ability is there, but you know also that you know, environment makes up such a big factor. So the fact that um, he can sort of pour that more work into them, work them a bit harder, yeah, that that gets them, lifts them to that, that next extra level. Yeah, two but you need a horse isn't it? that can cope with all that, cope with those pressures, go home, eat, sleep, you know, do it all again. Yeah. Bit like us, hey, when we get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're 10 days at the sale. <laughs> Gone. They need a pretty good constitution with the magic moves. Yeah, oh definitely. It's, it's a bit of a marathon. Kebabs you know? and Jack Daniels. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we we'll do it all again here at Classic. So, uh, we'll to it. But it's a work trip, Adrian. It's a work trip. <laughs> um, going back to the start, uh, for you, y your family um, have a r rich history in the breeding side of it. Um, your dad and your brother are on the farm at Evergreen. How come you decided to go down a slightly different route to become a trainer? Yeah, I guess um, you know, it was just always racing it what really interests me, I um, always followed the form very closely, um, you know, enjoyed, um, you know, it was betting as a, a younger kid that sort of probably got me interested more so in the racing than the breeding side of things. I guess there was just a, you know, a lot more happening, a bit more fast pace. You yeah, know, just yeah. Wanting a bit more to, excitement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think I needed that's probably a little bit more my sort of personality. Like I, you know, I'd prefer to pick up a form guide than a sale catalogue as a young guy, or you know, I preferred to look at yeah the race results than pedigree results, you know, um, or nicks or matings, you know that that didn't interest me until I needed to understand why the breed was relevant to you know racing and performance. Yeah, you know, that's when all of a sudden you know I became interested in breeding and you know everything that um yeah you know, I learned growing up sort of was a benefit to me. But it was all revolved around racing, uh, placement, how to get a horse fit, how to place it right, you know. Um, as I said, you know, it was probably betting originally as a young guy that got me, you know, interested in that whole journey of trying to work out, you know, how do I get a horse from, you know, paddock to peak condition to winning, you know, the yeah. biggest races. And so, like, you want to be a trainer. How did you go? How did you start? Like, where did it? Yeah, it's probably, begin? you know, a little bit sort of lost about how to make the sort of first steps into sort of racing or what was the right path or. You know what was going to work for for me. Um, you know, I I, uh, I started out working as a as a steward. I did a I did a year with Racing New South Wales, um, and that was purely I think just uh, timing. And um, you know, I came out of university, just saw an advert, and I thought, hey, look, this is, you know, this is a start in racing. You know, um, I can get in, get my foot in the door, understand racing, obviously from a different side of the fence. But um, you know, I learned a lot about um, you know, you're watching races every day you're watching it so closely you're watching you know multiple replays of the same race you know 10 20 times a day you know in the stewards room afterwards you know uh, days after that so you I knew every single horse in Sydney at that time you know off the back of my hand without sort of having to go through the form guide I knew what horse had done what where they'd trial because you're just following everything so closely and you, you see a lot of things and um, does some of that know, help you now like a uh, yeah I think definitely you know like I was taking a lot in and you know learnt to read races at the time and you know how to yeah there, there was a, a lot of um, I guess not necessarily race strategy but you just understand how things were sort of expected to be how they should be how they played out and maybe why they played out that way so there's a lot of yep. Understanding if a certain horse didn't perform. Why did it? And yep, yep, did it get caught know, three wide? No cover, like those sort of things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, it all it all helps. So I, I did a, a year of, of that with the stewards. As I said, it was from a different side of things. Learnt learnt that aspect. Um, that's when the opportunity came came up to uh, apply for the Daly Flying Start, which um, I was able to get accepted and you know, jumped out with both hands, and um, that gave me a great um, aspect of everything in the industry. You know, not not to mention seeing the best practices in the world, um, you know, breeding through um, England, Ireland, America. Um, you know, I did a stint in Hong Kong and then obviously here in Australia. Um, and you get to do placements. So I, I start, um, worked at various yards around the, training yards around the world, various studs, and it just opened your eyes. You know, it just absolutely gave me, you know, coming back to Australia just gave me such confidence to go, you know what, this is the path that I want to do, this is the area I want to go. Yep. And I feel really good about trying to chase that now. Yep. Um, so that's what I was able to do. Uh, Bruce Slade is a great friend, works closely with us as well. He was racing manager for Gay at the time, contacted him, yeah, 
Um, just James Harron. Cold, cold actually, call? No, no James, <laughs> Harron, James Harron put me in contact. I, yep. I sort of went to him. I think he might have been over in Ireland at, at the time. And when I was there, I was like, you know, what do you recommend? And he said, you need to go to Gaze. Actually, um, he knows Bruce well. He'll have a chat to him. And just said, yep, give Bruce a call. And did you think, like, when he said you need to go to Gaze, like, because most trainers starting out start small or in the country or something. You're like, how am I going to approach this one? The, the biggest uh, trainer I, in the I'm country. not going to go to yeah. Orange. Let's just go to Randwick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm know, going to the said, top. <laughs> why not? You know, you've got to think big picture with everything. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, contacted Bruce and Bruce said, you know what? There's an opening, you know, you start X, Y, Z. And, you know, got there and it just it went from there. And that was a that was an assistant racing manager position at the time. Um, worked in the yards, you know, sort of full time with the racing manager role and just learnt, tried to learn every aspect of the operation from the ground Medium. up. Medium. Yep, every, everything, <laughs> everything you know, from I the ground up. To, I got sent to NIDA, you know, Gay really? says, oh, yeah, you know, says, do it all, you know. <laughs> Went to the stylist, I, you know. You know That's and really good, goes, though, yeah. Like, like she, like, I'm asking talks for about, his money back. Gay talks well. about, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was a while back, you know. <laughs> Maybe need a redo, huh? <laughs> but, um, you know, that's, you know, when everyone says, put the gate, polish on you like it's a lot of those sort of different various things how to how to why present is yourself. that so important to her for her business well you know everyone's there representing her um and representing the business and and, and the, the brand owners, and yep. we're dealing with um yeah a lot of people have been very successful in in their own right in their own businesses and people want to deal with successful people and the people at the top of their game and we got to you know if we want to you know be at the top of the game we've got to you know I guess sort of have that mindset uh, um, yeah. and present ourselves in that way, act that way, um, and be that way. Um, so yeah, we've always been pretty sort of strict on that, and like to think that's certainly what we continue to sort of try and uphold. And and um, yeah, with and particularly with all the team we have a have around us. Um, so yeah, worked the ground up, learnt the operation, and just over the years, positions, and I was able just to continually sort of just take step off. yeah, just when the opportunities came, yep. I'll do that, I'll do that, and sort of kept growing in the role until eventually, um, and it all happened very quickly, I must say. I think I was there four years, and I got offered a, the, the opportunity to go and train in partnership with Gay. So that's yep. when we then we kicked that off. That might have been seven, seven, eight years ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And why do you think she saw in you compared to everyone else that worked there that this oh, look, is the guy I'm going to partner with? Look, no doubt, um, yeah, look, timing. No doubt, that's a big factor you know at the, the at the time of gay's career where i joined the operation um yeah that was yeah that that was just things falling into into place you know i, I can't say if, um i started working for 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 gay you know five years into her training career that would be in partnership after yeah, four years, yeah, you know? yeah so um yeah that was probably a bit of luck on on my side but um look i as i said i tried to make myself very uh, valuable throughout the business. I treated it like my own from the day that I arrived there. Um, I learned all aspects. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I lived and breathed that operation. Um, still, still do. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like when I arrived there, it's how I felt. You know, as if I was always going to be. You just know it's that, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, just um, that feeling. This is where I belong. When I sort of I go know. to some places, like I, I commit. Yeah, you know, and I commit to making it work. And I just do whatever it takes to make it work. So that's why I was sort of like when I was travelling, I was originally going to look for, um, you know, I wanted to do it. I loved my time overseas. And I loved learning. And I wanted to go do another year in America with a trainer. You know, with a, you know. Because you spent a bit of time with Wesley Ward. Yeah, you? a bit of time yeah. with Wesley, but only brief, you know, like you're doing six week stints here and there. I was like, you know what, I want to go to six months, 12 months, you know, with a Bob Baffert or, you know, anyone in America or, you know, just. I thought America was just very intriguing, the racing very different, but you know, still plenty to learn. Um, but that was, I was trying to put a few feelings out when the offer came up for Gay. I thought, look, I just, if I go overseas, when I go back to Australia, you know, I know I'm going to commit to a spot and I'll be there for, I'll be there for good. So, yeah, you know, that'll rule out any other yeah. chance to sort of go and see the world and you know, experience more. Uh, but it's like, well, you know, opportunity to work with Gay, you know, not going to turn that down. So. I'll, jump with that with both hands and yeah here we are you know committed and you know we're, we're pushing forward and you know hopefully Keep hopefully go. Still, yeah hopefully still still a few more to go you know? was it daunting going in at the start that, yeah 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 well and truly um yeah that was the biggest thing you know, as i said because it happened so quickly it wasn't you know it was only uh, four four years in and 
when Gay recommended, I think I stalled for, I was just stalled for like 12 months just getting the license. She's like, you know, go get your license. And, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got your license yet? I was like, ah, um, yeah, just waiting on it. <laughs> and I just wanted to, it's, yeah, it was, it was how is how is it going to be perceived from everyone? Like you said, I was certainly always just happy to be yeah, in, in the background working away. And I certainly very much was. Um, Did you feel yeah, pressure? That, that's it, you know, pressure, of course, you know, Gay's achieved what she has. Yeah. Obviously, the whole history of the stable, and then all of a sudden, someone's just being pulled out of the background and just thrown into the It's front interesting to of it. think of that side of it, isn't yeah, it? Like, yeah, I was it. like, this is very daunting. What if it doesn't work? What if, you know, it can't and train it, or whatever, you know? So it would have been the time, like, Pierre or more Joyce and that were around, would it? At the, it was probably, uh, they were there when I was first arrived. So it was about four years after that. We didn't yeah. quite have the headline horses at, at, at the time. Uh, but yeah, it was how is it going to be perceived? A lot of people saw it as Gay's, you know, major step towards retirement. They yeah. Thought, oh, well, you know, Gay will be there for 12 months and that'll be, you know, that'll be that done. And yeah, it was a much bigger picture um, strategy than, than that. And mm. um, as I said, Gay's still got, Gay will be kicking on for many years to come, you know, yeah. and, and we'll be kicking on together. It's a great partnership. We work well and getting back to why did you, she maybe sort of choose me to go into partnership. We we work very well together, you know. Um, yeah, and that's a, a big thing in, in, in partnerships. You, you know, you've got to make it work and, and, and training, training and horse racing in the industry probably is such a, you know, an opinionated uh would you yeah. clash much? Uh, not much, no. You know? Ever have this yeah. agreement? I would always so, have, yeah. yeah. No, but that's that's a good, th you know, it's a natural way, isn't yeah, it? We like, do always it. Be yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, the sure. horses. And you, you, you want to have... Be I'd honest with it, each other. I'd, I'd call it discussion. You want to have discussion, you know. Um, yeah, if you, as long as you're talking proactively about, you know, those points or discussions and, you know, um, and, and you gain something out of it, you know, there's usually a, a better outcome for being able to discuss it, not just saying, no, you're wrong. Decision made. Decision, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like everyone's got to have an open mind, and I think we both approach it that way. Or, oh, what are you thinking? What about that? Why did you and, do it this way? Yeah. yeah. And, and usually we both come around and go, "Oh, yeah, I see your point. You know, like yeah. oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Let's let's go that way. That's perfect way to go. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think sometimes yeah, being able to discuss that where other people may not have been thinking it just helps open your mind. And and Gay's always been very open minded in that way. You know, she's always. Um, every year, her and her father, they always travel, you know, they, you know, their annual holiday it wasn't just a go lie on the beach holiday, it was always, you know, they were over in America, they were in England, they are in... Learning, you know, learning, yeah, learning. Always learning, you know, whatever people yep. that they could meet, learn, what could they sort of bring back. So she's always had a very open mind to her approach to training and people and, you know, so it's, you know, that's probably been one of her greatest strengths and what's remain able to for her to remain at the top, you know, like if you look at her career for however many years she's been, decades she's been training for, I would say it's barely consistent of where she's kept herself oh, and maintained, 100%. you know, like yep. it, it's very hard to maintain at the top at that level for that long. And yep. that's one of the amazing things that, you know, she blows me away with every year is that that foot is never off the pedal, you yeah, yep. like never, like sat, sat, satisfied, but it's sort of like, all right, well, you know, how are you sort of going to raise the bar or keep the pressure on? It's not like, oh, we've had a great year with the two-year-olds this year. Um, you know, we're going to sit back and, you know, don't worry about buying much this year or next year. Yeah, no, yeah. It's like, no. Where's our next storm yeah, boy? Where's yeah. pressure on? Yeah. You know, you need to yep. be like, all right, you know, capitalise on this. And it's like you put yourself back under pressure again and keep the foot on and it's yep. just always on. And that's... That's a bit the industry. You need to be because the minute you take it off, oh, you you're can only quickly. As good as your last winner. I mean. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just so quickly slot back, and and that's just the what makes the industry tough. And it can be sort of uh, tiring at times, feeling like there's relentless carnivals on and relentless pressures on you, which there is because you need to. I don't even know where the four, but, last but, four weeks went. <laughs> I guess that's just not our industry. That's like anyone who's trying to compete exactly. at the top level yeah. business sportsman whatever you know like that pressure to you know once you get to the tops you don't you can't just coast through life anymore can you and just go oh, i made it there now you know i'm here to stay like you got to work sometimes even harder just to to stay to, there because yeah. yeah. everyone's know? aiming to beat you yeah yeah you know, there's always sort of new talent coming through uh, new ways of doing things you know 
and you bigger, say, younger, stronger ones coming through. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you say about like um, gay goes off on her holidays and stuff like that. It's yeah. not just going to the beach for a few days or that. She, you guys obviously have systems in place that allow you to go do that thing. Yeah, well, like obviously, training partnership helps. You know, like yeah. we'll always try and make it so that we'll one of us is never. Yeah, you know, someone's always there. You know, it always makes it easy. That's uh, it's not as though certain month of the year, you know, July, both of us disappear and we're uncontactable, you know, we're yeah. always there. But yeah, we're, we're fortunate, we're a bigger operation. Um, and, you know, I was able to step into an operation where a lot of the people around gay have been there for a number of years as well. You know, like we've had some, got some very loyal staff that have been there, um, you know, 20 years or, or, or more. So those guys, they well and truly have seen plenty of good horses go through the system. They know. They know the work required. They know the horses very well. We trust them. Uh, they know what to expect from us, and um, they work very hard for us. And that filters down through the operation. But um, you know, just over the few years as well, that's you know just as important as building you know your, your stable full of good horses to compete. Over the years, it's about trying to consolidate you know the right team of people around us that we work well with that shares that same vision, that same drive for success. Um, so you need those people around you on every level to to carry it out and make it work, you know. Um, yep. So we're, we're, we're fortunate we've got some good backing on all levels behind us. When you did, when the partnership was announced, you said you felt like a little bit of pressure and from the public and that. Did a horse like Global Glamour help ease that pressure? Pretty uh, well and truly, you know, like yeah. that's just sort of, you know, she happened those, very quickly when you all those results on. early days were you know sigh of relief rather than you know excitement you know yeah. like you said you like you know it may seem sort of calm on on top or on the surface but like underwater as i said you Duck well into it oh those legs were spinning don't you worry <laughs> <laughs> it was just like oh geez you know like this is you know and, and and that's where you know for all those years being able to you know there's no way I could have walked in at that time by myself to do something like that on that scale. Yeah. Solo. Yeah. No way. You know, um, and that's why it's good to have that mentor and the um, the confidence in having gay around and um, you know the guidance there at, at all levels and um, that just that's that um, you know sort of confidence and safety that you have of taking that next next step into that level. But yeah, like you said, going back since I was taking over the barn of 10 horses, you know, like we were starting at the, starting at, at that level in terms of sort of scale of horses. So um, that's what we've always stayed at and that's what we intend to stay at going forward. Just obviously want to have as much quality within that that we can have, but um, that's all I know how to manage, you know. So I've, would you I've say never tried a smaller work? team. I've, I've like how tried. many would you have, like in work? Um, we would have a hundred and, um, would have 130 in, in, in work. Yeah, in uh, how many states? Uh, in two states. Two states, yeah, so Victoria. A, Victoria, we've got a small team down in, in Flemington, uh, but the main base is Randwick. Everything's yeah. at Randwick, we see everything every day in front of us. We do, we split our times between Melbourne, between Gay and myself. Uh, Melbourne's very a good asset to have in terms of placement and obviously over the carnivals, um, you can duck horses down if there's a you know, three old fillies race that you need to get or a staying race that's not on the calendar here or or you can get horses to have their whole, whole campaign down there. But everything will start in Sydney, go through the, under our eyes, through everything there and then when they're ready, take them down for their placements. You know? yep. And what is an average day for you, mate? Like what time do you start? And... Um, usually, actually, this last week was the first week, a new track we're oh, starting time. So, Are you oh, fan? Yeah, true, that's right. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, it's still still adjusting because like you're still sort of naturally a bit sort of waking up. Yeah, yeah. Early enough. So um, originally our um, our staff started at 3 a.m. First horse on the track at, at 4 a.m. So that's gone back an hour now. So everything in the day has shifted back slightly. So they're in they're in the yard at 4 a.m. Uh, and our first horses are on the track at at, at five. Um, and coming off the track about 9, 9.30. So um, I will uh, touch base with all the foremen between four and five o'clock, uh, do whatever checks we need to in and around the place before getting on the track. I'll be in the tower at 5 a.m. to see every horse from start to finish of their work. So if that takes me through till nine o'clock, I'll be in the tower from five till nine, see every horse. They 
they're all warmed up and then they come get their work and then they go out and sort of do that. So that'll, as I said, that'll take us right up till then. Um, acceptance time, nomination time, you have a bit of programming. You know, that's between your, your 9 and 11, sort of any office work. Guys are back in the yard from 12.30 through to 3 o'clock now. Um, again, all the exercise, they need to get out and do plenty of work again, walking, treadmill, swimming, um, feet up again, checks. Uh, and that's sort of pretty much the day for the groundwork, for the horse work. Um, three o'clock through to six is sort of work list adjustments to that for the next day, um, structuring the day, um, touching base with owners, how you know, things have gone, might have a few runners on the day. So there's always something, you know. A few fires to put out somewhere, and yeah, uh, you know, yeah. So there's always you a fire. Know, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's on a clear running day where you've been able to do everything that you yeah, want to do. Yeah. It. Which uh, that never happens. That's not the 9 a.m. <laughs> call that you spent all day. Then you're just going off in that direction, dealing with something that you had no idea was going to pop up. So, yeah. which it does in this industry. There's, oh. and again with the numbers that we've got, there's always going to be that you're dealing with some element of, you know, whatever aspect it is in the operation, staff, horses, you know. Like any other business, there's, there's transport. Plenty. Just it's, it goes down yeah, the line, yeah. doesn't it? There's a there's a there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of aspects to to the to the running of the business for sure. And how do you obviously it's so full on and you've got 130 plus horses in the stable. How do you find time for you, like to get away with your family or just have dinner with them, even anything <laughs> like that? Well, it's just my wife and I at the moment, no kids, so oh, no. no doubt that makes you know life a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and look, going forward with some of those uh, adjustments, I'll have to make tweaks to our lives. But, um, you know, sale time even here, you know, where um, you yeah, be inspecting all day, you see your last horse at four or five o'clock to rush home, to um, go out to dinner, to see people that are in town for the week. To, to do know. a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Or, so yeah. There's, there's always <laughs> something something on. But, yeah, there'll be tweaks I make going forward when we do have a, a young family. But I've got a supportive wife who knew what she was yeah, in just, like she she's involved in horses as well, so understands it, gets it. Um, I'm not sure m many other, you know, people from other industries would. You know, that, no, that does yeah. make it does make it a bit difficult that time frame and the amount. Of, and kids are tough. Man. I bet you know, I've got to. I see your brother. Okay. Our kids go to the same school ah, in, yeah. in Hunter Valley, <laughs> and we see each other. We just give them give each other. <laughs> the <I'm> like, That's <laughs> not a respect. <laughs> it's just that dad <laughs> nod. Yeah. <laughs> And when it's funny because I, I can't get there that often, but when it sounds bad, but like say you do get home at that time, or not even home, but like you make yourself available to pick your kids up, it's like it's probably the last thing that you want to do, but you should be doing that. Oh, yeah. Like, so yeah. I do take that. And if I see your brother, we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, I know how important it is everyone who I've yeah, spoken to or you know, who have sort of had busy lives and you know if you ask them anything they'll do different uh, you know a lot of the feedback is you know always wish there was you know just made that time to be with the kids or have that family time which you know so you know no doubt that's important when the time comes and as i said we've got a good support system around it but i think it's just being disciplined and well structured have your day well structured to be organized uh, be productive throughout the day hit those targets i must say with the later hour going back starting time I'm probably a bit more productive throughout the day, like those days where, you know, the brain fog might have kicked in a little bit. You know, I can sort of a bit more task orientated, you know, for that certain time period of the day. So that may, you know, help going forward. Yeah. You know, just sort of structure the days better and, you know, have have the day done so that yeah, you can get home at six o'clock and try and know, somewhat switch yeah, on. And, 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 and be present. Yes. Yeah, with the That's people the around you. Thing. you know? like, it's, it's not, not just, just being home, it's, not just, it's being present. Yeah, not just getting yeah. home and you know, Such a good um, point. being a bit of a, a, a zombie. I want to be be there and engaging and um, yeah, and, and whether that's not owners I'm with on the day, you know, yeah. or you know, I want to be falling asleep at the table. You know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I want to be able to have a conversation and um, learn about people. You know, like we, we obviously it's very results driven, the business, but you know, the the owner experience side of thing is just so important as well and that comes with um, you know whether that's communication and, and feedback from the horses and, and the progress uh, but I think a big part of it is um, the race day and the race experience and you know the the contact or the Sunday at the stables you know like engaging with everyone and say hey guys you, we we understand people are putting up a lot of money to have horses in, in, in training with us you know the ongoing costs are significant the upfront costs are significant you know we want to, everyone to 
you know, ensure that they're getting something, you know, good a good return out of that in terms of sort of value of the whole know. journey. Yeah, exactly. It you know, is, it, yeah. It's results is whether you run is, fourth or first. Enjoy the day. Yep. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, and, you know, we need to be there to ensure that that's as good as experience as it can be. So, and in order to do that, you got to you got to be a bit positive. You got to have a bit of energy. You know, you got to have a good outlook on things. Um, you know, you, you sort of can't be tired and kicking stones. depressed. <laughs> you know, yep. it's, it's tough, you know, but that is on the tough days trying to, all right, that was a bad result, you know, right. I'm, I'm <laughs> feeling really bad about this at the moment, but, you know, put on a brave face, come on guys, don't worry about it, you know, X, Y, Z, this is how we dissect the race, let's go have a beer. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. No, that's a big thing for us too, like the experience, because we're under no, like, we we know one day we're going to have a slow horse or something, but it's just giving them that great experience and being honest and upfront with everything yep. that they might go, oh look, they, 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 they ticked every box, the horse didn't quite put in like we thought it might have, but let's go again because God, it was fun. Yeah, definitely. You know, if we can be transparent in, in those assessments, you know, and as accurate in those assessments as early as we can and all the way through, give the horse every opportunity. And like you said, um, you know, if people are aware of the situation, if we can manage the, you know, the exit out of those horse or whatever it may be, the future careers or progression or next step or, you know, continue to place it the next steps, you know, that's all a big part of it. So we want a positive, like you said, a positive ticket every single yeah. stage. You know? Yeah. Yeah. George has a few questions here. Best... Uh, don't, don't put me on the spot. That's where I'm no good. The best moment so far in your career, what would you say it would be? Um, for me, a very defining moment was winning the, the Golden Slipper. Like that was a, um, within the industry, that was very significant. Um, you know, you realise it once you do win it, sort of how, yeah, how, how big of an occasion and, and what it meant and sort of how you certainly may be perceived. And Did you get that home that night? Uh, yeah, no, I did. Well, it, was, it was COVID. I couldn't go anywhere. Oh. <laughs> you know, I had a, uh, what a Neil Payne run up and was that a bit hugged surreal? Us, hugged then, us on the day, and he got suspended for two months. I didn't, know, I didn't see him. So you know, that was as far as the celebrations went. A, a two-month ban for Neil. You're sitting, uh, at, sitting at home, just on the slipper. Oh it felt, God. it felt very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You probably could reflect on it that bit more because That's, of that. Yeah. It was, yeah, you know, it was pretty unique in that sense. And as I said, it was more just uh, where we're at in the business and where we're at in the career and, um, you know, such a big race, what that sort of really meant, you know, as I said, I think it's a bit of a pivotal moment for for us. So to happen sort of at the right time, it just sort of really helped, really sort of helped with the direction of the partnership. Yeah. For our listeners, I know we touched base um, before we record, uh, started recording, but, um, and not going into too much depth for certain reasons, but um, if you can tell our listeners about Storm Boy, yep. um, obviously you're super excited um, about that horse. Uh, yeah, fill us in, what yeah, you think so of him, what's the plans? Yeah, really exciting horse to have in the stable, and these are the types of horses that give you the spring and the step and um, keep you buzzing all day, um, and yeah, the ones that keep you up at night as well. So, <laughs> um, yeah, he's obviously one of the most exciting prospects that we've had in the in the yard for a long time undefeated and he's been pretty phenomenal in each of his three three starts um obviously the magic millions win was um yeah the best of those that was our first magic millions two-year-old winner as a, a partnership uh, but just the, the fashion and the way in which he did it uh, was phenomenal um i still think there's a lot of upside there um still a bit of depth we haven't seen him properly tested yet so i don't know how much more there is. I'm hoping there's still a, a good bit more and I get the indication that there may be. I bet cool more yeah. hoping there's a good <laughs> bit more <laughs> um, And uh, I think we're going to see improvement going over further. 14, 1600 metres, wouldn't be afraid to test him over that as a two-year-old. So Triple Crown is what everything's about at the moment. Um, that's first and foremost of his career. Everything will be solely focused on that. So we'll see him back at the trials uh, next week. He'll have a race uh, in the lead up to, to the slipper. And then, yeah, um, obviously he just had a just recently announced today, yesterday, Coolmore, Coolmore deal. Um, they they purchase into him um, with significant bonuses structured around, you know, his result in the slipper. Because obviously, if he goes on to win that, his value changes significantly. So, you know, the owners selling out. Um, you know, they need to be rewarded for that. 
Um, so that's the big aim, what we want to do, and try and win that. So that's exciting for, for all there involved. He's a great horse for, for Coolmore. Coolmore, it just shows you the level of confidence that Coolmore have got in his staying in Justify. You know, like they, they stand him and he's phenomenal in what he's, you know, he's got the champion two-year-old in you know, Australia, Europe and America, you know, and, and they're supporting him heavily in each one of those jurisdictions. And yeah, um, yeah, even you look at the mares that they bought over the years and have gone to Justify, like the, the level of investment they have solely around that sire and that bloodlines is they're phenomenal. Up. So, yeah. Um, is Tim sitting outside Adam's house, like deflating his tires <laughs> yeah. to try, try and get that ride? Or <laughs> oh, Adam's late again today. <laughs> Adam was two minutes late, Adrian. <laughs> Probably not just Tim, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. He's going to overcome that. He, no, he's no uh, look. Adam's done a great job. Um, he's worked, you know, with the horse right early days before he was storm boy at home you know like he was there for the other jump outs and um you know so he's able to get on him at the right time um yeah it does does get a little bit difficult um you know unfortunately how it falls some ways and that is a bit of luck of the luck of the draw um you know same thing happened with tim one year he went down to ride the diamond and you know we weren't going to run farnham but last minute we said i oh, know i think we'll run him in the slipper instead but he was already committed to going to the diamond and it's like all right well someone will just fill in for you Ended up, someone was Hugh Bain would just fill in for you for the silver slipper and then come out and bolt it in. And you know, all of a sudden, you know, Tim just couldn't quite yeah, get yeah. back on, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, that gave Huey his first, um, you know, golden slipper winner, you know. Yeah, uh, went through undefeated in those races the silver slipper, Todman, and, and golden slipper, yeah. And not only like Storm Boy this year, you've had so many really nice two year olds come out. Like, do you not? in the morning get excited when no one's around and just go let's just gallop them all together and see who's the best <laughs> you can tell us I, on the I, slide which one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's very hard like these two year olds they're not doing a, a lot of work um they're sometimes what the public is seeing is as much as information as i have as well you know I, i've got a i've got a gauge on how i think they've sort of placed and how we sort of work them and structure them um but it's not as though in their gallops, it's sort of like, you know, put Storm Boy with Shangri-La Express and run over this trip and, you know, the you know, best horse come away sort of thing. It's, um, you know, everything's sort of trying to be matched up with sort of evenly in their work so that they're competitive together, that they're all working at the same level. And, and the idea I want to see in their works is that they're finishing their works together. And yeah. so, um, yeah, a lot of the time, as I, how, how do I line this one up with that? Well. They haven't necessarily always worked with each other. Um, they've only run over a short, very short distance compared to their race, and uh, they haven't been fully tested. You know, but if you can tell me which horse looked better in trial A versus trial B, you know, you can sort of make you got more information than just as much information as sort of what I do. Yeah. Do you let data uh, and technology help you in this day and age, or not really? I haven't. I haven't yet. Yeah. Um, I tried sort of been trying to scratch the surface with it a bit and sort of try to have it, I tried sort of having it run a little bit in the background without sort of letting it affect my judgment. judgment. Yeah, that's what I'm such sort of a good seeing. point. Uh, before I sort of, and then it's like, all right, well, what I was seeing or the results, did that marry up with sort of what Like I with was, what you're feeling. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's such a I good haven't point. quite got to the level just yet where I'd say, yeah, you know, and I probably haven't thrown enough at it in terms of sort of the volume and consistency of the data. Um, I like using my eye and judgment. And, yeah, I love you know, that. I think that's very important and like to see the horses every day, notice the difference in the horses and the changes there. Um, yeah, lining the horses up in their works and their ability, placing them correctly in the right races and then having them fit when they're going there. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're tested at certain levels. They've got their milestones in their training that tries to give me those indicators. So, you know, hopefully I can be attentive enough and see everything myself um, with what I've taught myself watching that. Without now. looking at a computer. <laughs> well, you know, uh, no, you know, I from, believe in for, what you're for saying. For the last 10, 12 years at Randwick, just been watching, you know, um, 130 horses past your eyes every morning. You know, you, you start to get a, start to get a feel for it. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, um, yeah, that's, that's the way I like to operate. Now yeah. that may change. And as I said, that may, I, I think there's always rooms for improvement, you know. And oh, you're problem. never done learning. So, yeah, exactly. There's yeah. always ways to learn. So again, like Gay's method, I'm open-minded, you know. If someone, if I can, you know, it's just about, yeah, having that, bringing in that extra level of support, um, you know, putting the bit of 
yeah, resources aside or, you know, whether it be yeah, money, people, everything to, to do it um, and sort of running that. But I'd always want to, I'd almost run a couple of years of tests before I sort in of... In the background. Yeah, before yeah, I throw myself interesting. in. Yeah, it's no, it's, I, I be, agree with that, you. That's, that's just how I operate with everything, though. You know, I, I, I've always sort of... Boy, you're not going to be silly to just go gung-ho yeah, at it and then yeah. it fails. So. I, um, you know, can be criticised for not making a decision quick enough because I'm analysing too long or, you know, yeah. or just sort of wanting all the facts and, you know, I'm not just... A, you know, whereas Gay is complete opposite, you know, she'll be like, just, you know, shoot, shoot at the hip, bang, 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 you know, that's what I want done, you know, decision made. <laughs> you guys will get along well. So, yeah, we'll get along good. Actually, yeah, doesn't think done. We'll hang out here, mate. drink the like, dick. Well, what about, we think about it, you know, and like, we... I might have to jump in that golf buggy. think about it, you know, done, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, get around there, you guys will be, you guys will be off. <laughs> what do you reckon, mate, is the hardest part of your job as a trainer? Um, I, I guess, uh, dealing with the disappointments, um, you know, like obviously people, you, you know, the level of risk people are putting in or, or putting up, um, you know, I like, like we're doing everything we can to get the results, but you know, like just sometimes that's just, you know, that, that's just haven't achieved that, it's unachievable, whatever happens, like there might be a, you know, whether a horse gets, a horse gets injured or a horse just doesn't perform well or, you know, you get it wrong, you know, I, I hate... Or a boom horse that suddenly has a bit of a fail and you're like, oh, I, mean. I like, hate getting it wrong, you know, yeah. like, I try not to build them up, but like, you know, are we going to win this weekend? Yeah, I, I think we're a great chance and we finish tailed off, you know, like, yeah. it's like, oh my God, you know, like, you know. What, what, like, what happened here? Yeah, like, like, how can I be so far off the mark, you know, yeah. like, um, you know, I feel, I feel terrible, you know, trying to explain that, sorry guys, you know, you can just see everyone's look of disappointment at the race you can just read it on their face yeah. when you're trying to do the post like race shot. yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like you know like and you know sometimes you're like look i like i'm honestly shot trying my best yeah, yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. i've honestly feel i've done everything i can for you like i i i feel like a, a genuine person and you know like to be able to deliver on your word sort of thing you know so like when you when you when you're failing at the races and you feel like you were going to deliver this and you've delivered that you know, you feel like you're obviously letting people down. So that's the hardest part to sort of probably deal with that aspect of it. Um, it's so good for our listeners to hear that because um, I know it sounds so cliche, but they are not robots. They're not, they're not, you know. And, Nor and are things, we. Like things, we all make mistakes. Yep. The horse will make mistakes. Um, and, and, and look, it's the nature of the, the game to an extent, but I, I, if, if we can get it more right, right more times than we're getting it wrong and as i said the percentages are, are, are there hopefully to sort of back that up that you know as i said you know then i'm confident and happy that it's working and things are going where they should be and that you're around the mark there's always going to be there's going to be outliers no yeah. doubt you know and particularly when you get to the particularly when you get to the big races you know that those percentages are going to be harder you can still horses be performing at 110 percent doesn't necessarily mean you're still winning, you know, like you still may not be good enough. But, you know, I can accept that. I can accept when we're in races, we've had every chance, horses have been prepared well, you know, we just weren't good enough on the day. You can well and truly accept that. And I think owners can, you know, everyone just wants to see everything. And as long as we can accurately deliver that, say, this is where I feel we, we are, you know, and this is a good outcome if we can achieve this. Yeah. So it's accuracy. And why would you think, in your opinion, mate, obviously the prize money is great in New South Wales and that, but why, if people aren't involved, should, and they're thinking about getting involved in racing and investing in a horse, why should they? I think it's a great, it's a great outlet. It's a great network of people and owners, you know, particularly, as I said, I feel in our state we've created that. We've created a, created a community. Um, you know, people can be there every Sunday to see their horses. And uh, there's been some incredible friendships formed out of racing, whether it be ownerships or uh, just owners knowing each other, meeting each other at stables, meeting each other at the races. Yeah, there's some so great- every Sunday? Uh, every Sunday, yeah. yeah. Yep. Every uh, every Sunday over the carnivals um, in the winter will just be every first and third Sunday of the month. Yep. People get to know each other, everyone goes racing together. It's a great friendships for, like it's an outlet for people, you know, if people may have sort of had the kids move out, the family move on, you know, they need a social, you know, school holiday. Isn't yeah, or like, where's you know, where's my social group coming from at, at present? You know, or just new to town or whatever. You know, like, yeah, you know, it's it's a great way to meet people. Everyone's got a common interest, and they'll have so much fun getting to the races. And I tell you, Gay makes it an absolute blast. You know, yeah. she, <laughs> she's she's the best at it uh, in, in that sense. She really is. But yeah, that's just the 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 
experience side of things, which I think you need to look at it that way. Like you need to, put, like I want to get there. I want to. I want to have that thrill of owning a horse and, and winning a race. It's quite amazing. Like you even, um, you know, um, jockeys that you know become trainers. Like all of a sudden, like you know, um, like that's the biggest thrill they've ever had. In the, like I would have thought being on top of a horse. Would be, Pretty buzzing and like exciting. Danny Beasley. Yeah, but when those, gas those is... guys all of a sudden on the other side of the fence now, as a trainer, preparing them and being they're like, I've never been more nervous before the gates open, and never had a bigger buzz than when that horse won. I think that tells you something of the the excitement that you can get, say, like from an owner's perspective. You know, you don't necessarily have to be riding thing to get the whole buzz out of it. You know? I guess in a way, there's like when you're training or owning that you're there for the build up oh yeah yeah there's whereas a jockey every just on it for the, that yeah, period and like you said it's the journey to yeah, get that horse yeah. there there's a, a bigger emotion the highs and the lows and, to it yeah, so, yeah. Um, and sharing it then with people I can assure you that some of those like people that have experienced a, a win you know it's one it, it, it's an amazing feeling that they they love and as I said if you need, and then if you can do that with the right people around you which is you know where syndication is a great aspect of it you know like it's great you know if you can afford to own your horses outright it's, it's a good thing to do as well and you know it's probably more people who are structuring it more as a, a business I guess um, but it's great to have good mates around you you have a win give someone a high five and someone to share the champagne with in the in the bar oh, afterwards it's the and, you know, yeah. like, yeah, it's um yeah it, it's and, and then obviously the bigger races just heighten that yeah, through the roof. Yeah, I can uh, safely say Jen wouldn't see me for a week if I uh, <laughs> yeah. if I won a golden slipper. <laughs> oh, I still got to rock up there and front up the next day. But yeah, I think I'd uh... retire if we got a storm boy. <laughs> so look, both of our yearlings, uh, we're so fortunate that um, with Gay and Adrian, they're both full, but we plan on hopefully securing one. When you watch this, obviously the sale will be over, but keep an eye out. We'll work with uh, Gay and Adrian and obviously your team in hopefully securing another horse. And thank you so much yeah, for your brilliant. time. Oh, yeah, thanks. Looking forward to the looking forward to the team of horses that we've got. Hopefully, thank we you. can uh, yeah, deliver the owners a, a, some some great results. Yeah, no worries. Great, and great. Um, Adrian has uh, just said the experience that you will have with their with their horses too, with the open days, etc. So, uh, if we have a horse available, get involved. And how do you subscribe, George? Can you tell everyone? Um, you gotta subscribe, like it, share it. It's all available on um, YouTube, Spotify, all good um, platforms. And yeah, if you do want to get involved in a horse, especially if it's um, with Corinda and Adrian and Gay, then um, just get in touch with me, George at kbloodstock.com.au. Uh, register your interest, and we'll go from there, and you won't regret it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Cheers. No, mate. Awesome. So good. No, awesome. Appreciate that. Appreciate yeah, your any, time. Anytime, guys.